We have now had time to go through the multi hour interview by former Fox News propagandist Tucker Carlson of Russian authoritarian President Vladimir Putin. And to see the way that Vladimir Putin casually humiliates and ridicules and treats like a dog, like the gum on the bottom of his shoe, what is at least a guy that used to be one of the most popular media figures in the United States. I don't know if Tucker still is, but at one point he was. And for Putin, it's just ah, look at this guy I have to talk to. And the way that Putin shows his complete and total disregard for Tucker Carlson is he gives him a one hour history lesson. Putin knows everything about Tucker Carlson. It was clear he was briefed extensively about Tucker. New Tucker tried to uh, uh, work for the CIA, makes fun of him for that. We'll get to that. But Putin deliberately knowing that Tucker wants to ask questions and get answers, spending an hour slowly, excruciatingly boringly trying to, I guess, address the history of the region and Tucker with a frozen expression on his face of what the hell have I gotten myself into? So we're going to pick it. We'll just look at a little bit of each of these sections. You're going to hear the voiceover Putin speaking in Russian and you'll hear voiceover in English. This is about a half hour into Putin's history lesson and Tucker tries to interrupt and Putin just makes fun of him and says, no, 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 no. You want to interrupt and make this an entertaining show. I thought this was going to be a serious show. Tucker laughs because he's completely emasculated by Putin. Characterization of what you said. I understand that my long speeches probably fall outside of the genre of the interview. That is why I asked you at the beginning. Are we going to have a serious talk or a show? <laughs> you said a serious talk. So bear with me, please. We're coming to the point where the Soviet Ukraine was established. So he, <laughs> Putin says, uh, listen, you told me this was going to be serious. And I'm now getting to the point in my history lesson where Ukraine <laughs> was established, which puts a number of barriers between where they are and answering the question, why did you invade Ukraine? Eight minutes later, he still Putin has not answered a single question from Tucker, and he then gets to the presidency of George H. W. Bush. Bush, Bush After was invited by Bush Jr.'s father, Bush Sr., to visit his place on the ocean. <laughs> After was invited, it's, it, it's amazing to see Putin do this to Tucker because Tuck, Tucker's not used to interviewing the leaders of countries where there isn't a free press, maybe in some loose, ostensible way there is. But journalists get killed in Russia when they say the wrong thing. And it's like with when Castro wanted to speak for eight hours and everybody sat there peeing and pooping their pants as they listen, because he says he's going to speak for eight hours and you'd better listen. If Putin wants to do a two hour history lesson and not answer a single question, Tucker is going to sit there and he's going to take it. Um, 42 minutes into Putin's history lesson, they've reached the year of 2008. It says that Ukraine is a neutral state and in 2008, suddenly the doors or gates to NATO were open. To it. So, so we're slowly moving forward after 45 minutes or so. They were at they, they were close to 20 years ago and then 46 minutes into the history lesson, Tucker uh, gets made fun of by Putin for having wanted to join the CIA, which Putin says, and I understand it's sort of a serious organization. With the backing of CIA, of course, the organization you wanted to join back in the day, as I understand. At this point, the expression on Tucker's face is, oh boy, how much research has Putin been doing into my personal background? We should thank God they didn't let you in. Although it is a serious organization, I understand. <laughs> this, this is like nothing we have ever seen. I can't think of any anything that I've ever seen like this. And the best part is after Tucker acted like the interview went swimmingly and he got information from Putin and that it was just incredible. And he held up paperwork that Putin gave him. Sk uh, skip forward a few more minutes, 49 minutes into the history lesson. Uh, Tucker 
tries again to interrupt and move forward to get. We're still on the first question, which is why we're an hour in almost. And the question was, why did you invade Ukraine? We're still not there. Tucker tries to interrupt. And Putin is like, I'm only up to 2014, Tucker. You've got to give me more time. Dude, but that was eight years before the current conflict started. So what was the trigger <clears throat> for you? What was the moment where you decided you had to do this? Initially, it was the coup in Ukraine that provoked the conflict. By the way, back then, the representatives of three European countries, Germany, Poland... So he wants to go back. He goes back. He's like, well, listen, you know, I mean, OK, but let's go back to what Poland was doing back in 2014. Putin just mocking Tucker openly. But I, I can only imagine that after this, Putin got together with his friends, if he has any, and just laughed about what he did. Uh, here is another moment where I guess Tucker tries to interrupt and Putin says, I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it, sort of saying, don't interrupt me again. I'm coming to a very important point of today's agenda. Thank you. After all, the collapse of the Soviet Union. <laughs> oh, man. It, we eventually, after learning essentially nothing throughout this entire interview, we eventually get to the end as an afterthought. And I'll give to credit where credit is due. Tucker says to Putin, how about letting out of prison the Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich? Let him come back to the United States. He's not a spy. Just be a decent man. And OK, he asked for that. And I think that uh, to the extent that there's anything to respect here, maybe it's that Wall Street Journal reporter. He's 32. Um, and he's been in prison for almost a year. Uh, this is a huge story in the United States. And I just want to ask you directly, without getting into the details of it or your version of what happened, if as a sign of your decency, you would be willing to release him to us and we'll bring him back to the United States. We so made of good we have done so many gestures of goodwill out of decency that I think we have run out of them. No, we have never seen anyone reciprocate to us in a similar manner. Yeah. So, you know, appealing to the common decency of a guy who has no decency and sometimes his critics accidentally stab themselves in the back with a knife four times and then fall out of a window. I don't know that this is the guy you appeal to on a sense of human decency. But listen, Tucker tried it. Overall, the interview truly a humiliation. And it really served a couple different purposes for Putin. Number one, getting Tucker to go out there and do, do the pilgrimage. This makes Putin look strong, but that's OK. Right. I mean, other Western journalists have also asked Putin for interviews. Then Putin completely controls the interview and Tucker just sits there like a puppy uh, listening to, to, to what's being said. And could every other person who requested an interview uh, have managed it differently with Putin? I don't know. I think Christiana Manpour would have handled that differently. I don't know that she lets Putin do an hour history lesson while barely getting a word in edgewise. Um, and and so that's also a win for Putin in that he makes Tucker look so weak and silly. Um, and then even in the aftermath, Tucker Carlson saying, wow, it was just fascinating. And this and that. it's like, dude, he he railroaded you. He completely sandbagged you and walked all over you. So a number of different uh, media analysts looking at this and saying this did not go so well. This did not go particularly well. It was fascinating. It was fascinating, but didn't go particularly well. Uh, let me know what you think. I am curious. What do people in the audience think? Was this when we say was this worth doing? We kind of have to add for whom, right? Was it worth doing for Tucker? Was it worth having this to see what it's like to interview Putin in this way? Was it worth doing for Putin himself? What does it do in terms of the conflict in uh, Ukraine with Russia's invasion? A lot of unanswered questions, but really just almost like Putin walking a dog in, in how he managed this entire thing. Sometimes it can be tough to maintain an emotional connection with your significant other. You might work in different places at different times. There might be a kid in the way. It can be hard to find time for date nights, especially because kids demand so much attention, which is why I love our sponsor paired, which is the app for couples 
The app will prompt you with a daily question or a game or a guided conversation, all designed by leading psychologists. And the point is to just have a deeper connection with your partner, boost intimacy, build a deeper knowledge of one another. My girlfriend and I will use the prompts on paired throughout the day to stay connected. For instance, we answered a prompt about what we remember most from the early days of the relationship. It really helps us learn new things and there can be funny moments as well. An independent study found that couples using paired saw 36 percent increase in the quality of their relationship and giving a paired subscription as a gift is also a really great idea. You can try it free for seven days and get 25 percent off a subscription. Go to paired.com slash Pacman. The link is in the description.